Well, yesterday, NOAA announced that we now have El Nino conditions in the Pacific, which is uh, quite a bit earlier than expected. They were expecting it in late J July, and they've also increased the chance for a moderate to strong El Nino by the end of the season, hurricane season. We also have Kilauea erupting with Volg being the biggest, biggest concern. Joining us this morning to discuss these important topics is Dr. Stephen Bushner, a professor of atmospheric sciences at UH Manoa. Good morning, Dr. Bushner. Thanks for joining us once again uh, this morning. Good morning. It's my pleasure. So uh, let's just touch on what uh, Noah said yesterday. They said we have now the criteria for El Nino in the Pacific. So what do you, in your opinion, what does that mean as far as our hurricane season outlook? Well, for this year, the hurricane season appears to be near normal. There's like a 50-50 chance it will have more or less hurricanes than, than average. Uh, that's, of course, a, a reason to be be prepared. Uh, the, the reason that El Nino at this stage is not producing a real bump in the hurricane activity is that the warmest water is right over the equator and the hurricanes form just to the north of the equator. So as the, the El Nino progresses and as the warm water broadens and maybe starts to move to the north, then we'll see a greater impact from El Nino on the hurricane uh you know the likelihood of hurricanes maybe next year is the is, is going to be the the big year for hurricanes yeah because i mean these last so these aren't just annual events or six month events these things continue for a while this one expected to continue through the winter so uh, the waters are still heating up is basically what you're saying it might take a little while for that to kick in as far as tropical cyclone activity but by the end of this season we could see some some increased activity and of course the outlook can, is for the whole six months of the hurricane season right yeah, that's correct. Okay, so, so now but I yeah, oh, go ahead. Yeah, but I, I, the National Weather Service uh, took all these things into account when they said that this year would be near normal. Gotcha. 50-50 chance. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, now let's shift our attention to the VOG. Uh, we will, I, at least I take a look at your, your VOG monitor uh, from, from your webpage on the, the UH Manoa webpage. Why are emissions from Kilauea more impactful uh, between uh, the Mauna Loa and the people for Hawaii? Why is this different for Kilauea from what it was before Mauna Loa? Well, that's an interesting question. It, it turns out Mauna Loa erupts at high elevation, you know, at 14,000 feet, and then it moved maybe down to 12,000 feet. Uh, and that is above the trade wind inversion. And so the VOG that is produced uh, when the emissions hit the atmosphere, they more or less harmlessly float away in the free atmosphere and don't affect us down at sea level. Kilauea, on the other hand, is at 3,000 feet, and uh, Halemaumau is now erupting at about 21,000 uh, tons, kilotons per day. Uh, that VOG is, is quite significant and it will affect, uh, you know, the, the, the sea level areas, especially down along Pahala and the Kona Coast with these Northeast trade winds that we have. That's a very good point. Yesterday, my, my daily question, science question was, what are the factors that influence the VOLG, how it impacts us? Altitude was one of them, followed by wind direction and wind speed. But that seems, your answer seems to indicate that the altitude in this case seems to be more important than the others because the fa it, it takes lesser, you know, it's, it's a lot easier for it to get to ground level and affect the populations. Yeah, good point. So where on the islands is the impact of VOLG currently the greatest, in your opinion? Well, with Northeast Trades, the VOG kind of wraps around South Point and then the sea breeze brings it into Kona. So any place that is due downwind and then around the corner into Kona are going to be the places that are affected uh, the most under the current weather uh, pattern. If, if we get a little bit of a trough in the coming in from the west and, and the winds turn southeasterly, then all of the islands, main Hawaiian islands, will see some VOG. So... We'll have to see. But summer is a time of northeast trades. So yeah. <laughs> we're kind of fortunate for the, for the time being. The timing was perfect for this, yeah. And my forecast is east-northeast trades, I mean, all for the foreseeable future anyway, the next 10 days, if not longer. So where can people go for the for to get the inf more information on VOL concentrations? Do you have all that information on the website? Yes, indeed. It's called... Uh, uh, the VOG model, and it's available at uh, weather.hawaii.edu. 
And you can go there and you can see the probability that a particular concentration will be exceeded. That's a bit like a rain forecast, right? You have a 50% chance of rain or an 80% chance of rain. So the, the VOG model produces that kind of a probability. And it helps people to decide, you know, how they're going to uh, spend their day, whether they need to take exactly. actions to, to avoid the VOG. Yeah, it's a great product, the only one of its kind, uh, at least here for Hawaii, and it does. Concentrations, SO2, uh, SO4, where it's going to go, and precip, it includes winds, topography. Fantastic product. I encourage everybody to check it out. Dr. Bissinger, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Yeah, again, it's my pleasure. Thank uh -huh. you.